Cornell Law School. UCC, Article 2, Sales, Part 6. Breach, Repudiation and Excuse. Paragraph 2 609. Right to adequate assurance of performance. 1. A contract for sale imposes an obligation on each party that the other's expectation of receiving due performance will not be impaired. When reasonable grounds for insecurity arise with respect to the performance of either party, the other may in writing demand adequate assurance of due performance and until he receives such assurance may if commercially reasonable suspend any performance for which he has not already received the agreed return. 2. Between merchants reasonableness of grounds for insecurity and the adequacy of any assurance offered shall be determined according to commercial standards. 3. Acceptance of any improper delivery or payment does not prejudice the aggrieved party's right to demand adequate assurance of future performance. 4. After receipt of a justified demand failure to provide within a reasonable time not exceeding 30 days such assurance of due performance as is adequate under the circumstances of the particular case is a repudiation of the contract. Paragraph 2 610 Anticipatory repudiation. When either party repudiates the contract with respect to a performance not yet due the loss of which will substantially impair the value of the contract to the other, the aggrieved party may a for a commercially reasonable time await performance by the repudiating party, or b resort to any remedy for breach, section 2703 or section 2711. Even though he has notified the repudiating party that he would await the latter's performance and has urged retraction, and c. in either case suspend his own performance or proceed in accordance with the provisions of this article on the seller's right to identify goods to the contract notwithstanding breach or to salvage unfinished goods, section 2704. Paragraph 2, 611. Retraction of Anticipatory Repudiation. 1. Until the repudiating party's next performance is due, he can retract his repudiation unless the aggrieved party has since the repudiation cancelled or materially changed his position or otherwise indicated that he considers the repudiation final. 2. Retraction may be by any method which clearly indicates to the aggrieved party that the repudiating party intends to perform, but must include any assurance justifiably demanded under the provisions of this article. Section 2. 609. 3. Retraction reinstates the repudiating party's rights under the contract with due excuse and allowance to the aggrieved party for any delay occasioned by the repudiation. Paragraph 2 612. Installment Contract Breach 1. An installment contract is one which requires or authorizes the delivery of goods in separate lots to be separately accepted even though the contract contains a clause, each delivery is a separate contract or its equivalent. 2. The buyer may reject any installment which is non-conforming if the non-conformity substantially impairs the value of that installment and cannot be cured or if the non-conformity is a defect in the required documents, but if the non-conformity does not fall within subsection 3 and the seller gives adequate assurance of its cure, the buyer must accept that installment. 3. Whenever nonconformity or default with respect to one or more installments substantially impairs the value of the whole contract, there is a breach of the whole. But the aggrieved party reinstates the contract if he accepts a nonconforming installment without seasonably notifying of cancellation or if he brings an action with respect only to past installments or demands performance as to future installments. Paragraph 2 613 Casualty to identify goods. Where the contract requires for its performance goods identified when the contract is made, and the goods suffer casually without fault of either party before the risk of loss passes to the buyer, or in a proper case under a no arrival, no sale term, section 2324, then a if the loss is total, the contract is avoided, and b if the loss is partial or the goods have so deteriorated as no longer to conform to the contract the buyer may nevertheless demand inspection and at his option either treat the contract as avoided or accept the goods with due allowance from the contract price for the deterioration or the deficiency in quantity but without further right against the seller paragraph 2614 
substituted performance. 1. Where without fault of either party, the agreed berthing, loading, or unloading facilities fail or an agreed type of carrier becomes unavailable or the agreed manner of delivery otherwise becomes commercially impracticable but a commercially reasonable substitute is available, such substitute performance must be tendered and accepted. 2. If the agreed means or manner of payment fails because of domestic or foreign governmental regulation, the seller may withhold or stop delivery unless the buyer provides a means or manner of payment which is commercially a substantial equivalent. If delivery has already been taken, payment by the means or in the manner provided by the regulation discharges the buyer's obligation unless the regulation is discriminatory, oppressive or predatory. Paragraph 2615 Excused by failure of presupposed conditions except so far as a seller may have assumed a greater obligation and subject to the preceding section on substituted performance, a delay in delivery or non-delivery in whole or in part by a seller who complies with paragraphs b and c is not a breach of his duty under a contract for sale if performance as agreed has been made impracticable by the occurrence of a contingency the non-occurrence of which was a basic assumption on which the contract was made or by compliance in good faith with any applicable foreign or domestic governmental regulation or order whether or not it later proves to be invalid b where the causes mentioned in paragraph a affect only a part of the seller's capacity to perform he must allocate production and deliveries among his customers but may at his option include regular customers not then under contract as well as his own requirements for further manufacture he may so allocate in any manner which is fair and reasonable c the seller must notify the buyer seasonably that there will be delay or non-delivery and when allocation is required under paragraph b of the estimated quota thus made available for the buyer paragraph 2616 procedure of notice claiming excuse one where the buyer receives notification of a material or indefinite delay or an allocation justified under the preceding section he may by written notification to the seller as to any delivery concern and where the prospective deficiency substantially impairs the value of the whole contract under the provisions of this article relating to breach of installment contracts, section 2612, then also as to the whole, a. terminate and thereby discharge any unexecuted portion of the contract, or, b. modify the contract by agreeing to take his available quota in substitution. 2. If after receipt of such notification from the seller, the buyer fails so to modify the contract within a reasonable time, not exceeding 30 days the contract lapses with respect to any deliveries affected. 3. The provisions of this section may not be negated by agreement except in so far as the seller has assumed a greater obligation under the preceding section. S. 